The King's College Centre of Construction Law has worked on this research programme for six years now. We worked with the UK government exploring new procurement models through early contractor involvement, collaborative working and new uses of building information modelling, which is digital technology. We analysed the results of a series of seven trial projects. We also looked at prototypes, bespoke prototypes, of what could be a completely new form of Framework Alliance contract. I think at the Housing Forum we've always advocated sharing best practice, collaborating for results and so forth. So uh, a standardised approach that brings multiple parties and multiple projects together is going to underscore that opportunity to share best practice. The FAC1 Framework Alliance contract is a completely new type of contract. It's a multi-party, multi-project contract. And we can look at it in relation to five related themes. The planning, the joint planning of multiple projects with shared objectives, success measures and targets. We can look at the new systems for exchange of information through joint activities that improve value and through early warning that leads us to joint risk management and problem solving. Then we can look at inclusion, and I think inclusion is a really big point here. Bringing in the subcontractors, the suppliers, the manufacturers, the operators, even if they're not in the magic circle of the people who sign the team, looking for new ways to work with them. And equally importantly, new ways to work with stakeholders uh, such as residents and users of the completed project. The fourth theme is a rather conventional one. This is a contract after all, so we want to protect people's rights such as their intellectual property, their confidentiality, uh, their ability to rely on each other meeting deadlines. And then the last one is incentives. Why do it differently? We've built in the prospect of a range of incentives, whether those are shared financial benefits or the really important one, the prospect of earning the right to have a whole series of projects stretching over years into the future that enable everybody to invest in these new relationships. The FAC1 contract is being used on a whole range of projects and programmes of work. Uh, social housing, for example, uh, going back to the prototypes that were run by Hackney and Haringey. We've had very rapid early uptake, such as Futures Housing Group, on their £30 million refurbishment programme, which led to 9.3% savings and a, a good range of social value but also housing associations and local authorities all around the country uh, using this contract on the new build programmes and the refurbishment programmes. I think it's essential before you move to a form of contract that you do test out what works well um, in a real-time situation. Um, and it was fantastic that the trial project involved London boroughs of um, Hackney and um, Haringey because that gave uh, a real um, life situation. I've no doubt that in that particular project you would encounter many of the issues that occur in contracts. It's a very good way to test that. So before you actually move to the um, FAC1 contract in its form, uh, in its presented form, it's actually been robustly road tested. We have major building programmes, again going back to, for example, the Ministry of Justice prototype Framework Alliance. We now have Crown Commercial Service picking up FAC1 on their modular program, on their consultant alliance, on, on a very, very large £30 billion contractor framework due to go out to tender in 2019. Uh, then there's education. A number of the trial projects on which we work with government, such as the Catholic Sports College in Liverpool, the Education Basic Needs program in Hampshire and West Sussex, led us to see the potential of FAC1 in the education sector. And that's been picked up by LHC with their 5.5 billion programme in England and their 800 million programme in Scotland for schools and school buildings. But it's also led to a very interesting use of FAC in Italy, uh, where the Liscate School is being built under an Italian version of FAC uh, linked to the adoption of building information modelling and the reliance on digital technology to integrate the roles of the parties. Finally, there are two more areas in which FAC1 is being extensively used. One is highways, looking at uh, early trial projects by Surrey on Project Horizon, 
and by Connect Plus on the M25, um, that's led on to a really interesting supply chain alliance put together under FAC1 by Kia Highways Services. Again, with some early savings, they've recorded 8% plus some very interesting social value outputs. The results surprised us in terms of what we achieved. So the savings we got from the programme about 15%, that enabled us to deliver a £120 million programme for £100 million. But in addition to that, other things that we weren't expecting came out of it as well. We saw more investment into apprenticeships and skills through the arrangements we put in place. We saw extended warranties. So instead of two to four year warranties on materials, we were getting up to 10 year warranties. And also what we saw and what the public really saw was improved quality of work. And we've seen increased customer satisfaction over the period of time of the programme, way beyond our expectations. And finally, in the modular uh, area, uh, there's a lot of interest in off-site manufacture as an efficient way uh, to procure new build housing. The first uh, modular user of FAC was in a different sphere, that was the Football Foundation, uh, on a modular programme of changing rooms. But it's being picked up in the housing space, particularly through a research initiative led by the Construction Leadership Council um, to see whether FAC1 can be picked up by groups of clients so that they can sustain the throughput of a factory uh, for a large scale modular housing program. FAC1 is having significant impact uh, both in the UK and in other jurisdictions. It's been translated into four languages, it's been launched in four countries, in Germany, Italy, Bulgaria and Brazil. But back in the UK, we can see how teams are adopting it to integrate uh, the consultants with the contractors, with the subcontractors and manufacturers, but also to learn from one, one project to another. What we need is uh, improved value and improved integration in the way that we deliver our construction programs. You can't force people to do that. You can't just oblige them through contracts. You need to motivate them, you need to support them. And the impact of FAC1 its value to society, as illustrated in the examples I've given, is to create a medium through which clients, alone or in groups, can procure better value from long-term engagement with their teams.